Hey Flosstube, it's Kim aka Spurt and Stitcher on Instagram here with another monthly cross stitching update. Today is the 3rd of February. This is Flosstube at 133. There seems to be a whole lot more of you than there was the last time I recorded thanks to my whip parade. So thank you everyone for joining me. Just a quick uh, introduction for those that are, you know, new subscribers. Um, single mom of two up here in Michigan. Used to be in the Air Force, so I've lived all over the, the country, traveled all over the world. Uh, some of my previous videos uh, have a lot of Air Force stories. Um, I have a bird, I have a parrot, had a dog. Um, so just up here, living the life in Michigan. Uh, and I am one of the two admin for Full Coverage Fanatics. So you'll see I have a lot of full coverage pieces. I'm really into motivating people to get progress on their full coverage pieces, but I also have some non-full coverage as well. Um, so I'm just, I'm goal oriented. I like even in my hobbies to see progress. Um, so you'll see that I'm just really pushed to, to do my best that I can. It gives me satisfaction to meet goals and all that. So, um, for January, it's already been a good month. I've started out the year good. I don't know, you know, it's just trying new things, seeing what works, trying to improve on my numbers um, from last year, trying to get more progress. Uh, so this month, I worked on six different pieces, which is already a huge improvement. Um, so I'll show you all six of those. We'll talk numbers and all that. So my new year, new start was a Greyhound year by the Blue Flower. This one, I am stitching it on two pieces of fabric with the intent of cutting it apart um, and putting each one in a frame, you know, swapping it out monthly. So I stitched uh, just the January dog and the mug and the little snowflake motifs. They're on uh, New Year's Day and I got it done. Um, I had not at that point bought any of the called for specialty threads. Um, so I just went into my stash and saw based on the pattern, which ones I thought would actually show some um, variegation. And if I had any colors that were kind of similar. So this, um, I'm using 28 count Jobelin, coffee Jobelin. Um, and I use DMC except for his green coat and this mug. So for the green, I had uh, Crescent Color Works Eve's Leaves, and I stitched that round and round. And then for the mug, I used uh, DMC Variegated 4000, which you see has browns and grays, uh, a little bit of tan in there, and I stitched that round and round as well. Um, I have went to my uh, LNS Stitch in Time today, and I picked up... Uh, based on the pattern, the four um, hand dyed threads that I thought I really need based on the pattern that would show their variegation um, that I didn't know if I'd have something for. So they're all uh, Gentle Arts. I've got Fisherman's Wharf, Barn Gray, Sable, and Moonlit Path. So I picked up those four today. I did browse around the shop a little bit. But um, the LNS is one where you kind of really have to take some dot time and, and dig through things. You know, it's fun looking through stuff, but I also had the girls sitting in my truck. So I didn't take too much time to, to shop around and, and get other stuff. So that was my new year, new start. Um, in Full Garbage Fanatics for the year, we have seasonal events. So for each quarter of the year, you're either stitching something where the design... Um, to pick something for the season or has the colors that you would think of for that season. So for uh, quarter one, we're doing winter. So you're thinking grays, whites, that kind of thing, or winter scenes. So I'm working on Kindred Spirits by Jody Bergsma. Um, and I'm doing diagonal pages on this one and starting this page right about here. This is the piece, one of the four pieces that I did not touch last year. Uh, so I was eager to get into this. And um, my goal was also to use it for by the numbers in Full Coverage Fanatics to try to get 2,000 tent stitches each month. So then I'd have at least six by the end of March. And hopefully if I did a little bit more each month, I could get that page finish. 
Um, so for January, I put in 2,400 tent stitches and I've already worked on it last night and put in 500 more. So we're at 2,900 tent stitches on this page. Um, lots of grays, a couple blues. So we'll keep going. Uh, I'll put in about 2,000 more. And then hopefully in March I can get the page finish. Uh, 25 count uh, easy grid on this one. And I've got my little hippogriff and uh, Hogwarts Express just because... If you're going to Hippogriff, might as well keep the Harry Potter vibe. So then after that, I picked up another piece that while I did work on it last year, I hadn't worked on it in a while. So I wanted to get some more progress. That's upside down. Uh, Super Size Color Expansion Museum Shelf by Amy Stewart. This one I didn't say in my whip parade, but I am cropping out the outer gold frame. And the page I am on, or was on, is this one with the book with the dino face up here, the mastodon. So I, what I did, because last year, you know, when I was doing shooting for a page finish, every time I picked up a piece, didn't really work, if you think about it, with 61 no stitch days. Um, so I decided to try something different. I want to participate in all the full coverage fanatics events, which I didn't really do last year. Um, so I stitched on this for a week. And then I stitched on um, the next piece that I'll show you. And then I went back to this one. So while I did get two weeks, it was split up. So it wasn't two consecutive weeks. And I got the page finish. So it got just over 7,000 tent stitches in there. Uh, this is on my homemade PVC frame. I will link below the videos where I talk more about the frame if you've got questions on that. I do highly recommend um, considering making one of these if you know, you're budget limited or you just got lots of pieces, um, it's only $15, you know, including, including the, um, the side extender or the, uh, side tensioners. So there you can see my page finish. We have the, uh, skull of this guy completed. This is a dino face with some really dark eye patches and you got your mastodon. So 7,000 10 stitches into that one. I'll show you the whole piece again. This is 25 count, easy count. The frame itself is 48 inches. Um, and I believe the piece is about 36, I believe. Um, 125 colors in that one. So that is museum shelf. And then in full coverage fanatics, each month we have a week long event. For January, it was nicely new to put a week of progress into your newest full coverage start, which had been a while for, for me, because again, this is another piece I didn't touch uh, last year, so I've now touched two out of the four, which is good. Uh, this is US Travel Shelf by Amy Stewart. I'm stitching the regular version on this one, and I had only one partial page done up here, um, so I started on this page. In the week, I can't remember how many stitches I got done in the week, but then once I finished Museum Shelf, I went back to this one, did another three days, and got the page finish. So swapping out weekly, it's working for me. So I put a total of um, 5,410 stitches in there to get the page finish. This one I am stitching sideways to make it fit on my uh, quantum frame. This is a 36 inch. So there we go. Yeah, the page is split right about here. So you've got this, you know, makes me think of Gone with the Wind book cover, something like that. So we did all of these bright colors, reds and pinks. And, you know, you got some 995 in there. And we got Moana because she likes to travel. So there is that one. I only had... Um, one page is my goal for the year on this one. So we shall see if it gets touched again this year or not. So, um, and if you're considering stitching a piece sideways, I was going to uh, try to draw a picture to, to think about this, but so I've got two pieces that are being stitched sideways. I've got this one and I've got uh, Super Size Max Color Animal Totem. 
and I'm doing them two different ways. So if you think about it, when you use gridded fabric, you have to think what's right in your head, what makes the most sense is the gray thread, is that gonna be your zeros or your ones? So is it gonna be zero and each line is zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50? Or is it gonna be one, 11, 21, 31, 41, 51, exact, right? And then when you rotate it, so I, I lock the screen on my tablet, and I turn it, and that way I can, um, because Pattern Keeper won't rotate it for you, you gotta rotate your tablet physically. Um, so then when I'm working on it, are you doing the translation in your head so that your gray line is the same, this is hard to explain, I'm sorry if I'm confusing people, is the same as if it was this way? So it, if you draw a picture and think about it, it does change it. If you keep the orientation in your mind this way and then rotate it, you have to make that translation when you're stitching. For, and that's what I did for Animal Totem, which I started before this one. When I started this one, not thinking, I'm like, I'm just gonna stitch it like I normally do. So my gray lines are the same way as any other piece that I'm stitching in a normal orientation. I don't have to think about with this one. So it actually goes faster versus with Animal Totem, I'm constantly, like my mind is turned 90 degrees as I'm stitching it to make sure I've got the stitches in the right spot, if that makes sense. Something for you to consider. Hopefully I didn't confuse everybody. Um, but I just wanted to point that out. All right. And then my uh, focus on a finish for this year. Uh, Friends Forever by Ann Stokes. And I've got like 42 or 43,000 stitches to do down in this corner. So uh, five full pages and three partial pages, and they all fit on a Q-snap. I wanted to try to do some daily stitches on this one uh, each month to try to get around um, 3,500 tenth stitches done each month will see me to the finish by December. So that equates to like 115 stitches per day. These, these are tent stitches. And I had a lot of part threads. So at first I'm like, I'm just going to do all the part threads. That added up to 2,900 tent stitches. So almost my full rotation for the month was just putting in all the part threads. That was fun. And then I was looking at it and I said, okay, now I'm going to go by color. So I'm doing extreme cross country by color over these, you know, five full pages and eight or three partials the rest of the way. Um, going by most used color to least used color. So of course black is the most used color. So I started on the black. I have already put in, because I've not been sleeping well, um, getting up early and because uh, I can't sleep. So even though I only need like 100, it might be a little more for February because we're shorter on days, probably like 120 stitches per day. I've been putting in a lot more already and I've already stitched on it today. So I did... 3,510 stitches for January, um, plus already 800 for February. So again, 25 count, this is just regular Lugana. Um, so all of this and some of this and all of this down here, that's all of the park threads. So that was 2,900 plus there was a little bit of black I had to do up here and then I've done 800 more. Um, there is still over 7,000 stitches of black to do. So all you're going to get for February and March is more black. And then we'll have a whole month of $37.99. And then almost a full month of $33.71. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, but I've got the whole thing gridded. You can tell I've got two different colors of gridding. So this is the blue. And this is the, um, it's like the silver, what they call it? Uh, it escapes me right now. This blue, I had one spool of sulky thread that I bought in 2017. And I finally used it all up. 
And this piece and Sunday Delight are my only non-gridded full coverage pieces anymore. So I already had the silver. I don't really care for it because it is harder to see. Um, but I'm not going to buy a whole nother spool just to finish up this piece in Sunday Delight that's going to be finished next year. So I'll use the silver, even though it's harder to see. It is in there. If I get closer, you can see it. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Use up a whole spool of uh, sulky. Only took me, you know, six years. So that is uh, Friends Forever. Now, I finished those 3,500 stitches on the 23rd of January. And I was used to doing that daily piece. So the way that I do it is like either in the morning when I can't sleep or once I get home from work before the girls go to bed. So I eat, you know, eat dinner before the girls go to bed. I want something um, that I can move around, right? Not something big and bulky that's on a big frame. Something I can, uh, you know, stitch at the dinner table or whatever. So that's when I was doing my daily stitches. I was working on this. And then once they went to bed, I was working on the big stuff. Um, I liked that. I was getting lots of progress, feeling good. So once I finished my January stitches, I'm like, it's only the 23rd. You know, we've got like eight more days of the month. What should I work on? How about my oldest non-full coverage piece? Um, this is the Four Seasons Sal, the 2018 mystery uh, stitch along by Modern Folk Embroidery. I didn't talk about this in my uh, whip parade, but I bought this the end of in November 2018, um, and then bought the the last installment, the December piece. So I had each piece in you know each month's worth. So I had 12 different PDF files. Um, so I was working off paper, and it's slow going, especially when you're used to Pattern Keeper on a tablet, right? So late last year, um, I had emailed. The designer Jacob and I you you can log on the Modern Folk Embroidery website I had my order numbers I had my dates of purchase I referred him to my uh, Instagram where he could see I was working on the piece and I said is there any way I can get the PDF of the entire piece I understand if you don't I'm fully willing to buy it again but I'd like to have the PDF all as one piece so I can put it on uh, pattern keeper because I have other modern folk embroidery pieces that go just fine into pattern keeper and he sent it to me and it's so much easier to work on now because I'm not you know the way that they split it up by by month it's just you're flipping pages a lot right um, so working on it on pattern keeper a whole lot better so I've been you know the 24th of January through the 31st I put my daily stitches into this piece. And then because I got the page finish on Travel Shelf on the 30th of January, on the 31st of January, I'm like, well, what do I work on for just one day? So I just put a whole lot more stitches into this piece because now I almost have spring done. So I put in 1,551 stitches onto this one in eight days. Just in my daily stitches. Um, so this fabric is a uh, 28 count Monaco that I writ dyed myself using DMC 8 crew floss one over one teeny tiny stitches. Um, so I finished this border. I did this piece and I did this big motif here and started this piece. So we're just talking about this little Quaker border here because I already had the main border done for spring. So, um, I'm, I'm liking this. I like how, you know, working on my two oldest full coverage and non-full coverage pieces, I'm going to continue doing that. I don't know how much progress that'll give me. My goal for the year was only 12 days on this piece. Obviously, I'm going to get a whole lot more than that, just doing little amounts of daily stitches. Um, we'll see if I get to a finish. We'll see if I get just get close to a finish. Either way, it's a huge win for me. Um, I'd really like to see this one done. So that is the four season sale. So those are all six pieces that I worked on this month. Um, zero no stitching days. I worked every single day. I think there were two days where the only piece I worked on was the either the either one of those daily stitches. 
Um, so that works for me. That was my, my goal. Like if I'm so tired at night that I can't really barely do anything, let's just put a few stitches in. You know, if I can get past, I just need 115 stitches. I can do that, right? It's working. Okay, let's talk numbers. January full coverage, I've already put in 18,504 tent stitches. Divide it by two, you got nine, you know, 9,250 um, regular full stitches. For non-full coverage with the Greyhound piece and Four Seasons, I've got almost 2,300 stitches. So that's a great way to, to start the month or start the year, right? Uh, let's see. One thing that I have been forgetting to show you guys, um, I've shown this before every single year, is my Oort lamp. I bought this thing, about, it's I've been working on filling it for six years, and I normally show it right after Thanksgiving. So, and you know, end of November, beginning of December is when I normally show it. Well, I kept forgetting. So, you've got six years of Oorts are in here, and this thing's packed down. Like, you can't, you can't really push it down anymore. That's packed. So um, I bought this uh, lamp, and there is the regular lamp sec lamp piece that came with it. The lamp shade I had to buy separately, uh, but this lamp and there's different sizes of it I got from Target online. Uh, so that is my Oort lamp. The lamp part is not not bright enough to use as a stitching lamp, but I mean bedside lamp. Go ahead, absolutely. So, uh, there's six years, of course, different amounts of stitching each year, especially the last two years, um, since I'm now a working mom. So six years of orts and let's see, um, Hallie from stitching big things with Hallie recently, uh, went and talked about some of her stitching pages and how she you know, uses her planner and, and counts her stitches and things because we like to track numbers. Um, so I was going to grab something, hold on a second. Okay, so what Hallie does is she uses a regular planner and writes down each day how many stitches she got, she gets into each piece and then totals it up for her monthly, monthly stitches. Um, I don't know if she tracks it. I think she does track a number of stitches per piece. I do it a little bit differently. Um, I prefer each night when I'm done stitching, I keep one sheet uh, of scratch paper per whip. So like, here's my scratch paper for um, Four Seasons Sale. It's actually a leftover sheet. If you remember, I did Camelot Sampler. Uh, so this was just an extra piece of paper. And each day I just write how many stitches into it. I can write notes like, oh, I did a video then, or, oh, I'm using it for, um, especially if it's a full coverage piece, I used it for one of these events. Or, you know, every time a new month starts, and then this section you can see was one year, and here's another year, and it goes, you know, there's last year. Um, this is my second sheet of scratch paper for Museum Shelf, because it is such a big piece. Um, so there's all my my scratch notes for the stitches I did last year and here's this year so far so the first week I got done you know 4,000 stitches um, and posted that and did a um, epic journey in full coverage fanatics on that one and kept going I got the page finish and did another epic journey um, so I use these scratch pages and then in my planner my my stitchy stitchy tracker I should say I have got and I've shown this before but it was years ago um, so my whip list for the year uh, with start dates and then a draw line and these are all my new starts for this year will be in there uh, next page I have got a space to write my finishes um, these are my page finishes for each month each piece is abbreviated. So for January, I've got museum shelf page finish and travel shelf. My goals for the year, this is backwards for me, so it's hard for me to read, but I want to finish Friends Forever. Four Seasons Sal, I had it 12 days. Uh, my Santa sampler, I had it five days. Templar, I want to get one page done. 
and so on. And then here in this last one, I've got number of page finishes by piece. Okay. Um, and then I added my last goal. I want five or fewer no stitch days. And then by month, just another way to, to track this. So this one, this page isn't numbers, it's just by how many days I'm working on each piece. So we've got each day of the month in there and I write an X if I work on the piece, right? So you can see the first 23 days I worked on Friends Forever and then the other pieces I worked on I fill in the triangle if I get a page finish. And then let me show you a page from last year. Uh, I fill in the whole box if I finish the piece. So top triangle is a page finish. The whole box is I finished the piece. So that was December of last year when I finished old flannel shirt. Um, and then... So once the month is over, I translate that final number, so 7,055 10 stitches. After all the monthly pages in here, I, I've got half a page per whip, and then I keep track of how many stitches in January, what my goal is on that piece for that year, five pages and three partial. So kindred spirits, I wanted my goal is two pages done. So how many stitches I got done? And then because I like numbers and stuff, I also have an Excel sheet um, that I translate all this information into and save. So I keep track of the number of days total on each piece, uh, both monthly, year to date, and uh, total for the uh, life of the piece. Um, I keep track too of the full coverage phonetics events and what I'm what piece I'm using for each one. Uh, long term goals, like about three years ago, I, I did a long term goals to, to try to plan out so I have a full coverage finish each year. Uh, most years that works, and that's, that way I know how many pages to do, aim for each year, so I can get that um, that full coverage finish each year. And I think that's pretty much it. Keep track of no stitch days on there as well. So that's kind of my planning for those of you that like planning. Uh, let me look at what else I wanted to talk about today. Yeah, because then I have another page for video notes. I like writing stuff down. It helps my brain. Um, okay. Just like Hallie says, just going to talk floss tube numbers, not to make anybody feel good or feel bad just interesting right um, before I posted my whip parade I had been watching other people's whip parades and one thing I noticed was for people that I was not familiar with when I was looking for new uh, new people to follow the thumbnail you choose can really pique some people's interest so I took some time and I made a little thumbnail with a picture of each of my 15 whips. Not the whips themselves exactly, but like the design. So as you're scrolling and looking at Floss 2 videos, you can immediately see what kind of pieces I'm working on. And I think that uh, is the most important thing um, that really increased the views and subscriber, uh, new subscribers that I've had. So. My whip parade video is by far my most viewed video out of all, you know, I'll say 140 videos that I have because of the extras. So my whip parade video as of today has 6,100 some odd views. Um, and before that one, my most viewed video was like 4,000. And that's like floss tube number one. Um, I have gained 384 subscribers. Uh, so for you floss tubers, I think it's really key what your thumbnail is and also how you title your video. Like, you know, for two years now, I've been like two full, you know, two full coverage page finishes or one, one FFO or one, you know, um, 
one finished piece, whatever, to let people know, give them a hint as to what you're going to be talking about, what you're going to be showing. Just something I found interesting. And because I got so many views on my whip parade, I did finally reach the requirements to monetize my channel. And if you're new, I do not like monetizing. I have no interest in monetizing, but YouTube was putting ads on my video anyways. So I figured I might as well gain from it if they're gonna put videos on there. Go ahead, skip right through them. Absolutely, no problem with me, I don't care. But I figure if anyone's gonna get money from my videos, it's gonna be me. So I have started that process um, I created that AdSense account and I'm waiting for the review before they fully monetize my channel. Um, one other haul thing, I had one of my uh, former co-workers from Penske was at Walmart and he sent me a picture. Walmart is stopping selling DMC floss. So in their clearance aisle, they had one big cardboard box with just a mess of DMC floss that was marked at 10 cents a skein, right? So we're talking like 80 something percent off. So I went there and I, you know, most of the, most of the good colors were gone. And my first thought before I actually went there and saw the size of it was like, I'm gonna get it all, right? No, no. There was at least, okay, I bought 200 skeins. There was at least 500 more skeins there and they weren't the common colors. So I went through it. I spent like 20 minutes going through it and picking the most used colors that were there that I know I would use in my pieces. So colors that you recognize, right? So 318, 314, 3799, um, 799, uh, 898. So yeah. 3753 colors that you know you're going to use. So I picked up 200 skeins for 20 bucks. So I have, and I've already used two of them. So here's 200 skeins of DMC. Um, yeah. So that's the rest of my haul besides the four um, hand dyed threads. That's all I, no, I lied. I lied. There's one more piece. I bought one in the sale, the Hade sale. Let me pull it up. This one has been on my wish list for a while. And I finally pulled the trigger. Uh, I bought. Stop it. Um, Orion Nebula Max Colors. I, I've i always loved space. If you look at my phone, both my lock screen and my home screen are, are space and, and, you know, those kind of uh, pictures. Um, and I like this one. I like the mock-up for the Max Colors better than the regular because it just, it flowed better. So it's 650 by 650 with 240 colors. So that is now in my stash. Who knows when I'll start it. But, uh, yeah, I bought that one. Haven't bought a Hade in a while. So that is my haul. Uh, lastly, I do want to say a giant thank you for all the very kind comments on my Whip Parade video. Um, I won't really go into it. My youngest daughter does watch my videos. So, hi. I know I don't share their names on here. And I just want to say hi to her. Um... But thank you. It really means a lot to me. Floss tubers really are the best people. Um, we are, you know, getting better with, with missing the dog um, and other things. We'll just, you know, flexibility is the key to air power. We'll see how things go. Uh, that's, that's my outlook on life. Let's try to enjoy every day and uh, be convinced that every day is going to be a good day um, and try to make the best of everything, right? So, all right, guys, I'm going to get back to stitching. Um, you guys have a great stitchy day, great stitchy month, and we'll see you at the beginning of March. All right. Take care, guys. Bye.